Alright, we're back on gaming. And you know what? After reading the comments section of last week, after getting a lot of uh, private messages and talking to a number of you on social media and stuff like that, I don't know whether a lot of you are naive. I don't know if you're just hoping for, you know, the best, you know, trying to be positive. And if that's the case, I can understand that. You know what I mean? You're hoping that things are going to get better, but it's not. And then you have some who just want to try and prove me wrong simply because they're upset that I talked about their favorite YouTuber. I don't have time for this shit, all right? So today, I'm going to knock all that shit down, all right? We're going to finish this, all right, this week. Because as far as I'm concerned, if you're still on this pony where you just think riding high because of what I said last week about Poods and Boogie and all them, and you think that this shit is going to get better, as long as you have a prominent voice, which I can understand, like I said, you're trying to be positive. I understand that. But that's not reality when it comes to the media. Okay? So, today, I'm going to show you, because a lot of, you know, like I said, you, you guys and girls said that this will probably open up some things, and this will be the prominent voice, and the media will change. This will help change the media. No, it won't. And I'm going to show you that today. Because it's been, what, a week since I did a gaming video, since this has been sell, said? And, um, let me put it like this, Okay? This is what I've acquired in a week, so shall we get started with the media slandering gamers once again? So let me get this straight. Handheld games now have an age restriction and a gender restriction? They're, I'm just trying to figure this out because handheld games, look, they will sell anything to anyone. It doesn't matter how old you are. I mean, we know that as gamers, right? We've been playing as kids, and we still play as adults, because that's what we love. That's our hobby. But this is what they're going to say. Now, I put it like this. This is just one of many that you're going to see today, all right? For you to feel as though this will help change the landscape and help gamers, all right? Yeah, that's what you said. You know what? Let's get started with the next one, because maybe that was just a little too vague, you know, targeting a specific age group and a specific gender, all right? So let's talk about the community at all, I mean, overall, I mean, because they're just going to attack you. So, we're really going to play this game? How Nintendo told gamers, gamers, to get lost. Okay. I just need to know, who are buying these games? Hmm? Who are buying them? I just want to make this known. Because gamers are buying them, okay? But let's go to the next one because maybe, listen, maybe that article is enough for you to realize that you're being attacked or being slandered. So, let's go to the next one. So, this is the game we're playing, alright? So, the Nintendo Switch are for humans, not gamers. So, what you're saying is us gamers aren't human. You're saying that we're not human. We are not of this world, okay? Now, I will put it like this, okay, people, for those who don't remember, probably were too young to remember, this is Welcome to the 80s and 90s. That's what this is. This is when we were at Arcade Rats, and we were looked at as horrible beings, as society. We were looked at as fucking Swamp Thing or Toxic Avenger. That's what we were looked at as, all right? And then, now that, I should say now, current year, all right, we have a lot of flip-flopping. We have people who, you know, want to embrace gaming culture and try to... Pipe it up as much as possible for ratings or views, because you see it all the fucking time, you know. Oh, we got a geek con going on, or comic con, and you have all these people come out and say, Oh, I'm a geek all of a sudden, and if you dress up enough, then obviously you're into the fold. Which is a bunch of bullshit, alright? And they let you know, get your geek on, and all this other bullshit, right? And then as soon as you go against what they say, well, you're nothing but a fucking dork anyway. You're nothing but a fucking geek. Who gives a shit what you think? You're nothing, you're not even fucking human. You shouldn't even be talking to us. You're dead. Because gamers are dead. Remember this shit? The flip-flopping. They will use you, like I said, for ratings, for buy rates, whatever. Alright? But as soon as you say, hey, wait, that's not how our culture is. You're absolutely wrong on this. Then they're going to railroad you and degrade you back to what they used to. This is the media at work. This is the juggernaut at work. And what you're failing to realize is that one voice, whether it's Poods or Poogie or who the fuck ever, is not enough. It doesn't matter how many views, sub, subs or views they get on YouTube. They are a drop in the bucket as opposed to how media has acted. And we're not just saying this within the previous 
two or three years with this type of slander or even fake news. You know, now current year, everyone says fake news. That means that Trump brought it on. Fake news has been around, bruh, since the 80s, all right? How many times I got to keep remi reminding people that when the news used to come on every fucking night, they used to say, the black man is a threat to society. Look at these riots. Or whatever. Fake news. And then they just carefully mold their narrative. We've seen this for years. Of course, now, if we look at the gaming aspect, like I said, you have to understand, the media in general has this down to a T. So if you think that one guy saying something for a week, all right, for a week or two weeks is going to fucking matter, I, have to, I really have to ask you, what is wrong with you? You should know better than that. But also, again, you have to realize, also the community in general is the problem. Okay, and I've said this before, because this is the solution. I've told you for years this is the solution, and still nobody wants to listen, because everybody has a fucking excuse. Well, you know, Poots, he doesn't make these type of fucking videos. He's used to, you know, doing his own thing and having fun. Do you really want to get into that shit? Because first off, I don't care what type of videos he does, but if you watch his videos, guys constantly talk about fucking rape. You really want to get into this? Do you really want to? Okay, okay. But, understand that I'm tired of the excuses. If you haven't realized as of late, all right, that's all we're seeing. I've talked to some of you not too long ago where some of you say, you know, this is why I don't do info videos anymore because you can't make the community care. And I've talked to other, you know, others and they said, you know what, I, I've just given up on the community and that I'm just going to target the general audience. And, you know, that's kind of sad, but I understand. And here's the thing as well, you have to understand. When people say that they're giving up on the community and they're targeting the general audience, you do realize that you're playing the same game that the media played. Gamers are dead. We don't need gamers because we can target a broader, more general audience. So as you can see, we have two sides of the same coin. Of course, not as extreme as the other side because the community or the gamers aren't really going that hard, you know what I mean, to show what the media has, how bad they are. Only at times they, they have their gotcha moments. But the media does this week in and week out. And if they keep doing this and keep feeding the beast, you know what that means? The general audience will say, well, if everyone's covering it and everyone's saying the same thing, then it must be true. No matter how much, it's a fucking lie. And we saw not too long ago. We already talked about the Cool Kids Club last week. But what we didn't talk about last week are people who are for themselves, really. Did we not? Now, of course, we see, for the previous couple of years... A lot of people try to make a career off of this, especially off the Gamergate thing. When it comes to writers and developers and take this Gamergate and blah, blah, people started making careers off of it. Same thing with people within our community. We saw people getting popular simply off of the Gamergate bullshit. We saw people come out of nowhere because a lot of people tried to look at the positive and say, okay, we have spawned a new, uh, uh, you know, a new generation of video makers who are willing to fight and everything. And then you slowly saw that, no, this is just for views. This is just for popularity. That's all it was. They didn't really give a shit, did they? And I told y'all before, who in the hell left the gate open? Because when you leave the back door open and the gate open, you're going to have a lot of clowns just walk in. That's what I try to tell you. But no one would hear that. Because everybody was for themselves. And this is why I say you have to understand. You have people who tried to make careers off of this shit. And you had gamers who tried to make, I guess if you want to say careers, because some of them got big enough to monetize and make a good amount of money, make careers off of it as well. It's no different. It's the same blueprint if you look at it. But that's not all. About the attitudes. I told you that in order to fight the media on this. And we've seen it for years from the gaming aspect. You're a bunch of killers, you're a bunch of misogynists, you're a bunch of rapists, you're worse than terrorists. We saw it all, did we not? Okay. In order to combat these type of allegations, you got to clean up the community. If you have all your things and, you know, all your ducks in a row, if you're solid as a rock in your community, then no matter what they say, it'll bounce off you. But no, as we know, the community has a ton of skeletons in their closet. So, as usual, when people have skeletons in the closet, it's almost like when you say, don't throw stones when you live in a glass house. It's the same thing. The media's going to say, who are you to judge us when you do this, 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 and this? The community refused to clean itself up. That's what happened. And we're going to talk about that right now, because since we're on this Nintendo kick, let's talk about this. Zelda, Breath of the Wild, I'm sorry, yeah, Breath of the Wild, Metascore is bombarded with negative reviews 
for paid reviews. That's right. We've got people going to their Metacritic, uh, it was their Metacritic, and saying, uh, their Metacritic is saying, you know, this score doesn't deserve what it gets. Or, I'm mad that this is getting a high score because only high scores like this should only be on the PlayStation 4. Zelda should be on the PlayStation 4. What? I, like, I don't know where these people come from due to the fact that Zelda has always been with Nintendo. Why would you think it would be on the PlayStation 4? If you want to play a game that is of quality as of late and you want to compare it to Zelda, then why aren't you playing Horizon Zero Dawn? I don't understand this. But there's more. Like I said, there's people who are accusing, you know, these high scores of paid reviews. When you see this type of attitude within our community, regardless if you're going to say, well, you know, we're going to have a few bad apples. It's not just a few bad apples. That's what you're failing to realize. It's not. It's more than that. This is what happens when you have fanboys. I told you before. Fanboys and fangirls kill our community. They kill it. But there's more. Like I said, this is why the community needs to be cleaned up. People need to be put in check. Alright? But when I say this, I'm the bad guy. Which is, it's, it's, yes, because asking for responsibility, because as we know, the media doesn't take any responsibility. They point and say, no, it's gamers' fault. Gamers, when they're caught, they say, oh, we're not taking any responsibility. It's whoever else's fault. Or they make an excuse for it. We just saw that last week with the FGC. It gets to a point now, like I said, before. I've said it time, I've said it time and time again. You want to be respected as adults, but you want to act like adults. And for me, that's not going to fly. And nobody gets a free pass. Like I said, this internet era has been completely different, where you can have random you know, opinions from random screen names anywhere. But when you get together as a group and you dogpile, it doesn't help your case at all. But let's talk more, shall we? People are already trying to fix Nintendo Switch dumb design issues. As we know, the charger at the bottom and stuff like that. And you know what? As gamers, you'd think you'd know better than this. Because you should know by now, in this generation at least, or I would say even the previous generation, the PS3 era, 360 era, uh, you would have learned to not buy things first day. You should know. They're going to come out with another version, a cleaned up version, a fixed version, as all the problems that happened in the first version. This is not like the PS2 era or whatever. And even people had some problems with the PS2 at the time. You know, with the disc loading era and stuff like that. But you have to understand... This new generation that's coming along with these consoles, they're trying to do so much that they actually fail a lot more than what you've seen in the past. So you think you'd hold off and wait until Nintendo said, okay, we can fix this. We'll go with another version, and, you know, it'll be a better version, you know? But, of course, that advertising, if you don't have it right now, you're not in a loop. You're not a cool kid. You're not worth anyone's time. That's the advertising that every company has used against the community. And for some reason... People, I, I guess they just have a low self-esteem. They keep falling for it. They keep falling for it. Not to mention, if we're going to talk paid reviews, let's talk about the people who were paid to, you know, to advertise it. We're not, I'm not talking about it just on YouTube. We're talking about on Twitter. We're talking, yeah, oh, I'm for this. I already got it. Blah, blah, blah. And grown men I've seen, all right, I just got my Nintendo Switch. And they start dancing on camera. You're a grown man dancing on camera because you got a plastic toy. Like... Have some restraint. There's a thing about being, you know, excited about things, but when you're a grown man, when you're in your 30s, there is no reason, all right, to be acting that way. And listen, when I got my PS4, y'all saw, I got my PS4, I took a picture of it, and I thanked people. Well, there's no way I was like, yeah, yeah, I was, no, no. It's like, okay, it's here. Just like when I get a new game, okay, it's here. Let's get it in. You know, like, there's no... Excitement where I feel as though I need to get on camera and start shimmying and dancing and acting a fool. That's not passion. That's that's attention whoring. That's what it is. There's a difference. But we're, that's, it. that's the attitudes that we have. I think that gamers have two extremes at times. Where you have a really negative extreme and it goes way too far. And then you have these people who just try to be a little bit too exuberant at times. And you're talking to a person who's very exuberant, but very exuberant at times. Like I said, you, there's a fine line of being excited and playing the shit out of yourself. There's a, there's a fine line. But, once again, like I said, these are the type of attitudes that need to, you really need to see it for what it is. Like I said, and it needs to be cleaned up in our community. While this is happening, guess what? Now we're going to go into the political aspect. That's right, because the media is coming after you gamers again.
Yeah, they went there. They decided to go there. So let, let's talk about this, okay? Discord, as you know, Discord is a free service for gamers to connect with other gamers and to have their hubs and be able to talk, you know, while they're playing games and things of that nature. That's what Discord is for. Now they're trying to say that Discord is for the far right. It's for the alt-right or whatever kind of groups you want to call it. It is a popular chat group. So, once again, you were comparing. We saw last week with For Honor, right? There's vote. Gamers, compare them to the alt-right. Now you're saying that Discord, that gamers use it, comparing them to the far right again. Any gamer that's using Discord is a popular place for the far right. This is where we're going now. Yeah. But there's more. Oh, there's definitely more. You need to see this in depth for what they're getting ready to talk about. Because when you talk about, you know, blowing the fuck out, let's talk about it. Because this is what they think it's all about. That's a fucking reach. If I've never seen that's a huge reach. You know what I mean? But it goes to show you, gamers, this is what the media thinks of you. Nothing has changed. Like I said, in order for it to change, a lot of things need to be changed within our community in order to have a fighting chance. This is why you see a lot of people say these days, I don't care anymore. They don't, they just, they've, they've done. They've put down their shield and they've walked away. This is exactly what's going on. It's been, it's been what, three, four years, four years about now? And this is just something that a lot of people don't have in them to keep doing. And I can understand that. I understand that. Not everyone can keep fighting and fighting and fighting. I get it. And, and seeing pretty much no results. And Grant, we saw a number of victories uh, within this time frame. You know, media really started to, you know, when everyone started talking about ethics and journalism, media began to comply. They did. You know, they started putting on the references. They started telling you heads up, you know, what was going on. That's what gamers wanted. But here's the thing. When you still have, and I hate to use, no, I'm not going to use the word because they love to use, that's a buzzword these days for, for those idiots. You know, the word toxic. When you still have these fucking idiots who decide to keep taking jabs at gamers and thinking, well, everyone else is doing it and they're getting paid off of it. If I do it, I can do the same thing. And like I said, if you notice, the same things are going to happen meteorize the rounds. And we'll talk about that in a minute, okay? But it's not just the media, all right? You have your developers who are going to come out and call you gamers out now because of your attitudes, again, all right? And credit, they're absolutely wrong on this. But apparently this is something that needed to be addressed when it came to the developers. Because they say that you gamers are shitting the bed. Now look, within all the bullshit that they listed, you know, being the alt and, you know, and all this other bullshit they just decided on, you know, the worst aspects of gamer culture. And I want to talk about that for a minute. Because, like I said last week, we saw a number of so-called gamers who, when their attitudes came out, they blamed the culture. Did they not? For the culture. For the culture. And we saw not too long ago, again, I keep bringing this guy up. Hipster Show Gamer came out and made this long rant, apparently, on his Facebook about, you know, after he, you know, threatened people over Resident Evil 7 and how he felt about, you know, Horizon Zero Dawn, how it was all about the culture and the passion for the culture. And this is how gamers act. No, not all gamers go around threatening people simply because of a bad review score. Or a fair review score. Or a review score that you don't agree with. Gamers don't do that. The, the majority of gamers do not do that. So once again, blaming the culture and then the, the media or the industry now will take it and run with it. These are the bad parts of gamer culture that need to be, you know, fixed. So thank you for giving them that ammo, idiot. And many others who feel that way. Because that's what it is. Like I said, you can't, like I said, if you clean up your community... They won't have any ammo. Then they can't say anything. But it seems like people don't want to check themselves. There's more. Because when he talks about consumer king entitlement, must we talk about the phrase the consumer is always right? Alright? And if you don't like that, well, you can move on. But here's the thing. If gamers are passionate about specific the specific project, alright, they're going to go through it with a fine-tooth comb. I mean, we just saw last week when it came to Mass Effect and Drama how gamers had to fix the facial animations and faces in Mass Effect and Drama as opposed to the developers. So, for you to say that it's just consumer king entitlement, you have to also understand, once again, from a consumer aspect, you need our money, alright, in order to survive. But, there is a flip side to that. I will talk about it in a minute. Because what you're getting ready to see makes things even worse. 
Now, for those who can't see that on screen, it literally says, how do we get gamers from stop shitting the bed? Easy. We make their VR games fucking gay. That's what it says. That's exactly what it says. We make VR fucking gay. Which means they're going to make products so bad for VR, for the platform, that they don't sell. That VR damn near can die at this point if this is their agenda. And on top of it, mind you, all of this is despite you gamers. Just to spite you. Because, I mean, come on, let's be honest here. Not all the community is bad. We know that. But they're now going to make inferior products to the point where it turns you off. Do you understand that? This is the type of crazy we have in the industry right now. So, you've seen examples all right today of the media slandering you and the industry slandering you. Again, I have to ask, do you think that one YouTuber and his prominent voice is going to stop this train? No, it's not. Especially, stop talking about it. Especially then. Like I said, a drop in the bucket. But y'all would rather cheer that dude on and call me a hater and everything else instead of looking at the facts. But there's more. Oh yeah, there's more. Because to show you just how bad the media is getting, that's right, we're going right back to the media, okay? I'm trying to figure out, because, like I said, this is an example of, you're going to be like, what the hell are they doing? I would like to know what the hell they're doing uh, as well. But that's not the case here. The underlying aspect here is how they can all get together and make the same article. We talked about the Game Journal's pros before. They can make the same article, and for some reason, it's acceptable. So, let's talk about the media for some odd reason making reports about licking Nintendo Switch cartridges. Seriously, who the fuck is licking cartridges? Who does this? I remember back in the day when Nintendo, sometimes you would blow your cartridges. No one was licking fucking cartridges. Nobody. And now that it's become a thing, we're seeing people get on camera and lick cartridges. Now you're saying to yourself, well, you know, this has also been done before. Yeah, we saw Olivia Munn licking controllers. We saw, uh, what was that other chick? I forgot her name. Because now she's in Mass Effect, right? We saw her licking fucking, car uh, was it, licking controllers. If you haven't realized that this has been going on for a while, again, another way of attention whoring. Let's say, because people are getting on camera now starting to lick cartridges. Ew, it's nasty. What the fuck did you expect? What did you expect? You expect that it tastes like candy? Like, this is what our community, what our media, and what our industry is right now. And if you can't see it's a fucking dumpster fire, and that it needs to be fixed, it needs to be put out, instead of making excuses... Or just trying to get at me in, in, you know, in the comment section every week. I don't agree with this because blah, 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 blah. And therefore you are wrong. If you don't understand that these videos, it's not about always being right or wrong. It's not. Nine times out of ten, it's not about being right or wrong. This is why I put the links in the info bar or show you the screens to make up your own opinion. It's about bringing up the conversation to raise awareness. Seems a lot of you have forgotten that. And then I just give you my opinion. But when it comes to having proof to support my opinion, it's kind of hard to sit here and say, no, you're wrong. Like I said, this is something that has been a slow burn for a long time. To think that one person can come out and stop this is ridiculous as far as I'm concerned. And like I said, I understand that a number of you want to be positive. And you know you want this to be finished. You want the media to stop this. You want to. But no, they're not because they're on this crusade. You have to understand there's a number of people within this, com in this, I say, in this community who aren't gamers and a number of people within the media who aren't gamers. Matter of fact, we just saw not too long ago where developers said, you don't need to be a gamer to develop for video games. So there's a number of people in the industry who aren't gamers and are making video games. The same blueprint, the same tactics, the same bullshit. And with everything being the same and being recycled, you expect things to change? No. No. But there's more. Because it seems like the media has this fascination with Nintendo, apparently. Because while they're licking cartridges, let's not forget that they were using Amiibos as butt plugs. So people are sticking Amiibos up their butt. We're seeing people take Dracon controllers now and sticking them up their butt. And also, you're licking cartridges in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the same case. So, you're literally licking and sticking them up your... Okay, okay. Alright. I, I, where does this go? 
Where does this go? I'm just trying to figure out. Like I said, any like I said, anybody can see this stuff, and you can point out the media and say, "This is fuck. This is fucking bad. This is wrong. This is disgusting." And the media can turn to the community and say, "See this video? This is bad. This is wrong. This is disgusting. Look at how this person is acting." You see it all the time. But one side, eventually, if you want to be better than the other, you have to clean your side up first before attacking the other side. So then the other side can say, "Yeah, but look at what you." Wait, wait. No, not there. Well, they did. They did. But, nope, not there either. Well, you know what? This person of did... Wait, no, not there either. And every time I say these things, you come up and you say, well, you're trying to censor people, you're trying to tone police. No, it's called acting responsibly. Why is that a problem? Y'all have a phrase for fucking everything. All I ask is that people just realize what's going on and be responsible about it. Be cautious of what you do because of how it impacts others in the community. That's all I ask. Instead, it's no, you're a fascist, you're trying to shut us down, you're starting to sound like SJWs, to be honest, alright? You're trying to shut us down, you're trying to censor us, you're trying to quiet us, you're trying to... That's, that's what you that's what it sound like. Like I said, one and the same. You have an excuse for everything. Every time someone acts up, it's okay. No, it's not okay. If you act like a fucking idiot, call them on it, because I'll put it like this. Idiots who get mad that you call them on it, they gotta look at themselves eventually... Oh, we're mad because you showed this. Well, maybe if you didn't act that fucking way, it wouldn't be anything to show. Responsibility, common sense. I know these things are becoming extinct very quickly, aren't they? Especially in our community. It's very backwards the way our community works. And I will show you, again, I will show you examples of this later. Because, like I said, we've already talked about the media, we've, we've talked a little about the community, and we talked about the industry. Later I'll show you more about our community, okay? Yeah, let's move on. And news, yeah, we're finally getting some fucking news, right? Waka Waka 7, World Heroes Perfect, and King of Fighters 98 is coming to the Switch. That's right, so we'll see what happens with that. A lot of people are saying, well, it's only uh, for Japanese Switch right now. We'll see what happens, alright? But I believe that um, the Switch is region free, isn't it? So I don't think it really matters. Anyways, let's move on from that. Under Night and Birth is free this month for the PS Plus. That's right, so you users, if you have not played Under Night and Birth, you like fighting games, by all means, please give it a chance. It's free. It's free. So, that's another thing. In more fighting game news, Guilty Gear, Zerg, uh, was it, Rev 2, launches May 25th in Japan. The reason I'm bringing, I'm bringing this news to you is because I know people who play Guilty Gear when they get ready for these uh, tournaments and all, 9 times out of 10, they buy the import version. Alright, so they, they have a head up on the US version, you know, and they have a pretty much, like I said again, a head up, a leg up. On their opponents. That's usually how it works. Alright? So, just to let you know. Also, more fighting game news. Arcana Hearts 3 Love Max is available on Humble Bumble. That's right. Humble, sorry. Humble Bundle. Not Bumble. I usually say that, though. Humble Bundle. So, that's another thing. In more news. That's right. CEO. 2017 registration is officially live. So, if you're thinking about going there and putting on a persona for wrestling, because we see this with the FGC all the time, um... By all means, CEO is live. Okay? That's all your news for fighting games, but that doesn't mean that we're going to just blow by fighting games. No. Let's talk about this week's fighting game of the week. Now, I don't know if everyone's going to remember this game for the N64, but I remember this very well due to the fact that I spent a number of hours playing it. And it is a great game. And once again, this is one of those games I feel deserves a remake. Now, of course, a lot of people are going to say, you know, well, back in the day when people played these type of games, these VR games, they always had to ring out. Virtual Fighter, Soul Calibur, blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? It just fell, you know, run the mill, and people just forgot about it. And I think that's the thing. Not every game needs a ring out, all right? But during that time, it was a popular thing. So, of course, during this remake, make, there shouldn't be a ring out, as far as I'm concerned. However, I feel as though the mechanics could stay the same when it comes to this type of 3D fighter, and just needs to be brushed up. I think that's all it is. So, let's take a look at Fighter's Destiny. Why wouldn't you want another game? Like I've said before, the more games that are out that are available, 
the wider your community grows. It gets bigger. That's what you want. So, let's move on, shall we? Now we talk about esports. Because there's some disturbing things this week in esports, which is kind of like, are you fucking serious? So, let's get started. First off, League of Legends creators sue cheating service and wins $10 million. Which, if it's a cheating service, they, they really went to court and they found it was a legit uh, cheating service. Yeah, fuck them. Who cares? Who needs a cheating service? And you know what? It goes to show you that, once again, when it comes to competition and it comes to gamers, when these type of sites come up, gamers, you got to stay away from them. I understand that you want to be the best, but it doesn't mean you cheat to be the best. Get good. That's the problem. And we've seen this time and time again. There's no reason to cheat. But people will keep cheating for some reason. I just saw the other service not too long ago. You know, like you said, with the YouTubers when they were trying to bring it up and they got in trouble. So, yeah. Anyways, let's move on, shall we? Paladins. That's right. We're going to talk about Paladins. Uh, the developers are denying cloning Overwatch. Now, look. If you've seen Paladins, you've seen the way it plays. Um, a lot of people was like, this is definitely Overwatch. This is one of those things that, you know, that people aren't going to play. Paladins is having a hard time uh, getting its user base up because a lot of people are already deemed it a clone of Overwatch. And I find that weird because, like I said, they did not a cloning. But there's another game that's getting ready to come out that actually just looks like Overwatch. It really does. And for those who don't know talk about, Cliffy B. Yeah, we're going to talk about him. Apparently, his game Lawbreakers, all right, closed beta is coming to PAX East. But if anyone has seen the gameplay, the 19-minute gameplay that IGN put out for this, I literally, I'm watching this, I'm like, are these new Overwatch characters? I'm like, are they? This just, it looks like Overwatch. So, I don't know if this is just a thing where people have just taken on to that style and just going to start making games from it. Because we've seen this in movies as well. I mean, remember, at the same time it came out, A Bug's Life came out and Ants came out. It was like... Okay, what's going on here? It was the same type of concept, you know what I mean? So people were just like, okay. And of course there were some, there's some behind the scenes issues with that, with the writers and stuff like that. We won't get into that. But the fact is, you had two movies pretty much were identical that came out. And, um, but they were still both somewhat successful. And, um, with this, it's, uh, I think it's almost the same thing. I think that people have either, they just had the same concept, or they've just seen how successful something can be and just taken that style and just run with it. You know what I mean? So that doesn't mean that it has to automatically be Overwatch. You know what I mean? But Lawbreakers, I mean, like I said, I'm, I'm going to give Paladins somewhat of a break here. But Lawbreakers, yeah. That, look, I, listen, watch the 19 minute gameplay. I was just like, this shit is Overwatch. I just thought they were just new Overwatch characters. I really thought they were. So we'll see just how um, well it does, but with Cliffy B's name attached to it. You never know. It may bring those Gears of War fans over to it. You never know. And let's be honest here, people. When it comes to these type of games, let's not forget, you know, the daddy of them all. I should say, you know, the daddy. Some of the granddaddies of them all that, that have done this before. We're talking about your unreals. You know what I mean? And stuff like that. So, I mean, let's not forget that. And I believe Unreal Tournament, just not too long ago, just had a free uh, a free version come out not too long ago for, uh, for anyone on PC who wants to play it. So, um, yeah, there's that. Let's not forget those. Those were great games back then. So... But more Overwatch news, alright? Since we're on this Overwatch thing. More Overwatch story content is coming this year. So, you can get ready for that, I guess, Overwatch fans. And here's something that really bothers me. Hugely. It bothers me so bad, alright? The Overwatch League team slots will reportedly cost $15 million. That's right. So, if you have an esports team and you want to get into this league, $15 million right off the bat. That's crazy. That's, look, I don't care how much money this shit generates, alright? You can't tell me that you're treating this almost like a real sports team. Because you gotta think, when sports teams, when they get together to come up with a new expansion team, it takes millions upon millions of dollars to get that, you know, on, you know, up and running. Also, you gotta think, you gotta have your stadium built from the ground up and stuff like that. It takes a lot of cost to have a new team, an expansion sports team. Regardless if fans come out and say, this team sucks. It takes a lot to get a sports team together when it comes to, you know, those major things. We are still talking esports. That is still early in its, I guess you can say it's early due to the fact that the years that MLG has been around. But other, we're talking about other places, you know what I mean, that have spawned up now. And it's still very early in its development. And to be asking $15 million for your team to get in, that's crazy. That is crazy. So, pretty much, you have to have a lot of backing. I guess this is why we see a lot of NBA teams now back esports teams. Like I said, the Sixers got their own esports team. Uh, we, I reported before, a number of NBA teams do, and a number of NBA athletes have decided to step in and do esports as well. This costs a lot of money. I feel it's unnecessary for it to cost this much. 
you know? But when you have high rollers, and we're talking big bucks, you know what that brings. That means even more big bucks comes around, and don't forget about the gambling aspect that's going to happen. Vegas will be all over this, if they aren't already. I believe they are, though, aren't they? But Vegas will be all over this. Anything that can generate some type of money will be bet on. Let's not forget that. I'm telling you, esports, they have a lot of work to do, especially between their players, their sponsors. We've talked about this before, about associations and stuff. There's just a lot of work. A lot of work. I think gamers don't realize how much they're getting in over their heads with this. I don't think they do. It doesn't matter your skill. When it comes to esports at this point, it, skill isn't that much of a big deal. I, I hate to say that. I really do. Skill does play a part. But these guys are really looking at it from an entertainment aspect. We will talk about that more next week. Because I have some things I need to say about the entertainment aspect when it comes to esports. Like I said, we'll talk about that next week. That'll be a good topic for next week. But in more news, all right, Call of Duty. Got to talk about this. Activision. Variety map packs are coming to Modern Warfare Remastered and will cost $15. Now, there's a couple of problems with this, okay? Because we've seen people complain that the, the map packs from before cost $10. So then we have fans saying, well, it's remastered. Are you really complaining about $5? Um, but here's the thing. A number of you guys and girls contacted me about this and said, actually, this shouldn't cost $10 or $15 or complain about $5. They promised that this was going to be free. And now they're going back on their word and making you pay for it. If this is true, Activision, once again, you should know this is Activision. They can't be trusted. Okay? They can't. But it goes to show you that these companies, they don't care about you. I mean, we see, we see this all the time with WB Games. But they don't care about you. They will milk you. And they know if they have you hooked on that product, guess what? They're going to keep giving it to you. And this is why we talked about couple years ago, how once you're hooked to a product, and they just keep feeding it out, oh, you can have this for microtransactions, you can have this, and we'll talk about that in a bit too, um, and people just hooked, and they're just, they're just constantly consuming, 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 and buying, and buying, and buying, it's no different than being an addict, we talked about this before, it's pretty sad to see, but you want to know what else is sad to see, and I said I'd talk about it, about the community, okay, because we have some people who are fucking up the community, let's talk about losers, who are getting donations for shoutouts. For those who can't see that, it, it says literally, donations for a shoutout. Now, of course you're seeing this guy, and a lot of people I've seen had a number of opinions on this. You know, you see people who are saying, well, you know, he's just wearing, he's trying to let his freak flag fly, where other people are saying, no, he's being a fucking attention whore. He doesn't walk around the street looking like that. I'm sure he doesn't. You know what I mean? Then you have other people I've seen who say, oh, he's just a fucking dork. And he said, yeah, he is a fucking dork. Look at him. But the fact is, that we've dealt with this, for those who don't remember, who have not been here long enough on YouTube, in 2011, a lot of us dealt with this when it came to giving donations for shoutouts. Guys would charge other people, that's right, donation, you know, charge them for shoutouts, because they felt as though, if I shout you out on my channel, because my channel's popular, and I shout you out, those people will now go to your channel. So in order for you, you know, those people to go to your channel, because now time is money, you need to give me money. To do that. To give you a verbal shout out. Now for those who don't remember. Back in 2010-2011. Lots of. I know a lot of you um, in the comment section. Talking about you know. You don't bring you know. You don't have the original intro anymore. And remember back in 2010-2011. I would bring out the AKAs. And then I would start shouting out gamers left and right. You know. Free of charge. Yeah. And with no problems. You know. People would have their birthdays. I would shout them out on their birthdays. And stuff like that. It didn't, it didn't matter. Because it was about community. It was all about love. It was all, all about energy. It was all about having fun. As you can see, the landscape has changed a lot these days. But when you have guys who did this in 2011 and would start charging for shoutouts to, you know, naive kids or guys who really wanted to be part of YouTube and be big, um, a lot of us stepped up and was like, this is wrong, this needs to be stopped. And um, like I said, that was shut down big, like, big time. It was shut down. Like a lot of guys stopped doing it because of it. Because a number of us... Uh, said, this is wrong, and if you don't stop, we're going to railroad you. And then it was just people were cutting videos left and right on people who did that. It was like the Wild West here. You have to understand that. It wasn't any fans getting involved and saying, I'm going to make a video because you said something about the guy I like. There was none of that. There was no, I'm going to flag your video down because I don't like what you said about said person. There was none of that. No. In 2010, 2011, people got at each other. That's what it was. It was like the Wild West. And if you weren't better than the next person, well, guess what? You just got to hold that L, son. 
That's how it was. And people went after others with no hesitation when it came to that. And it eventually stopped. Like I said, 2010, 2011, most of 2011. We are now in 2017. I know a lot of people like to say current year. 2017. And now we are seeing this again. You've got to be kidding me, right? Except now, it's not on YouTube. It's on Twitch. Now, of course, I'm bringing this up. And you're going to have people, because you, you people were saying it in the comment section last week. It seems like event has problems with people making money off YouTube. Correction. I got a problem with fucking losers who, have, who pretty much do the bare minimum and try to beg for money from kids. That's what I got a problem with. Grown-ass men sitting on their ass for 10 to 12 fucking hours a day, hoping, praying, or having this incentive of, I'll shout you out. I'll shout you out if you give me money. That's a fucking problem. Look at the people who do this shit. You know what? Maybe it's time that I stop caring so much. Maybe it's time I start thinking about myself. Because it seems like everyone else who only thinks about themselves, y'all praise them to the fucking moon. Look at every person who is popular on YouTube or somewhat popular on YouTube who spends so much time doing this shit. They don't have a fucking job. This is their job at this point. This is their career. And what did I tell you? As a person who lives in reality, kids, do not look at this shit, look at these people and say, this is the role model, this is the fucking guy. Because they're not. Alright? Go to school, go get a fucking career, and go live life. That's what you need to do. Even Pooj himself has said, if I don't keep doing this, there's going to be a problem. I spend most of my time online. Look at other people who constantly beg for donations. Look what just happened with DSP. Now, I tell you that shit was coming with Machinima. I told you that shit was coming. But of course, I was the bad guy in that situation. Again, with his fan base. You have to understand, these people spend so much fucking time doing this when they literally... Y'all think, these guys who spend so much time doing this... They've done it for years, upon years, upon years. And you think, so, oh, they're building a somewhat of a lucrative career. Guess what? When the, when the well runs dry, they can't go back to the workforce. Because they've been out of it so long. They can't go back and make a standard living. So now, I ha you have to depend on others. And that's why I want to say I now. Because I put it like this. Week in and week out. It's either you love me or you hate me. Do you really think that I'm going to put my life in your hands? Do you really believe that? Huh? You would sit here and think that if I do this long enough that I expect you, people who love me and hate me, to control my life? My lights will be not, won't be put on? When's my, when's my next meal coming? You think I'm going to put my life in your hands? Get the fuck out of here. You've got to be crazy. So as far as I'm concerned, it's not about hating because that's what y'all say. It's hate. No, it's reality. It's reality. These dudes without YouTube wouldn't be shit. Y'all wouldn't know who the fuck they were. Matter of fact, they walked down the street today. You wouldn't know the fuck they were. Who's was at MomoCon last year? No one even saw, no one didn't care. Nobody. You understand that? Boogie goes to these conventions and what? In, in some type of lark. What does this tell you? On the outside, when you see these people, they're not who you think they are. Without this shit, people look at them as if they're nobody. And guess what? That's how it should be. Because that's reality. People have their own problems in reality. They're trying to work hard in reality. Go do what you gotta do. Don't sit on here for 10 hours a fucking day and expect me to feel bad for you when there's nothing fucking wrong with you and you can go get a job. Some of these people have degrees. They're not even fucking using them. So you went to school and did all that hard work to get your degree just to sit on YouTube and do what? Beg children for money. And I'm supposed, to, I'm supposed to be okay with that. I'm supposed to be okay. I guess some of you will say, well, you're just upset that you're not making money. When do I monetize my videos? When? I got two jobs. All right? I can't rely on people. You can't rely on people online to just give me money. Get the fuck out of here. It seems a lot of you don't understand just how fast this can fall apart. Like I said, because you, it's a trend. Being a YouTuber is a trend. You can be at the top of the mountain one day, and then no one will give a shit about you the next. But you're going to sacrifice the rest of the shit of your life. That's crazy. Look at Wings of Redemption. Shit happened to him, didn't it? When, he, when YouTube was, was paying out, he was, oh, I bought a truck. I'm doing all this shit. I'm the man. Y'all can't tell me shit. These days, I don't have anything to fall back on. What does that tell you? 
And some can make the case, well, he never had anything to fall back on. So for him to be out in the backwoods somewhere, he actually made, he made some progress. The problem is with YouTubers is that a lot of them don't know how to handle that progress. They get egotistical. You start seeing these people, they're flashing cash and shit and spending money. Yeah, guess what? That shit ain't going to last long. You're not, you're not building for the future, you're not planning for the future. You don't have a plan B through Z. This is your destination. This is your ending. For a number of us, number of us who does, do this just for fun, this is a pit stop. This is nothing. I can turn off this camera right now and be good. Where the rest of these dudes will sit on here for 10 hours, please donate. I still need money. Matter of fact, how about I sign a copy of a game? Who are you? You're nobody. You're a dude on camera just like me. You think if I sign a copy of a game, people going to want to buy this shit? <laughs> the arrogance it takes to do something that way. But all for money, right? Because they need money. Money, money, money. And y'all expect me to be okay with this. Y'all expect me to just, you just want to call, you know what? Fuck it. Just call me a hater from now on in. Fuck it. That's all y'all got. That's all y'all got because y'all live in reality. Call me a hater every fucking day or every time I talk about this subject. How about that? All right? That tells me enough. You got nothing else. You have no backing any other fucking way as far as I'm concerned. Let's move on. Like I said, losers who are doing this, they should be, once again, thrown out of the community. They were taken care of in 2011. Tell me 2017, you're not going to take care of this shit? Okay. Okay. Let's move on. Speaking of people who sign copies and can't move any product, that's right, we're going to talk about it. Dreamcast. That's right. A Dreamcast was signed by Fred Durst. That's right. And fails to sell online for a second time. That's right. He signed the Dreamcast. Nobody wants this shit. Because, once again... Height of popularity. People love Limp Biscuit. Now, no one cares. Can't even sell a fucking Dreamcast. Link will be in the info bar for that one. Okay? Just to let you know. Maybe if you just sold the Dreamcast as it was and didn't sign it, it probably would have sold. Probably would have. It goes to show you that you cannot worry. Like I said, popularity comes and goes. Views come and go. Subs come and go. Same thing when it comes to their media, you know, in music. You're popular, it? Come and go, come and go, come and go. Same thing. If you're not up on the trend every time, you will not survive. It is sink or swim. That's why a lot of us, like myself, choose not to compete in this old bull bullshit. If you ask me, is this mental gymnastics as far as I'm concerned when it comes to making money? You're still working for pennies. But let's move on. But of course, when I say that, somebody say, well, look at this YouTuber, look at this YouTuber. Yeah, look at how many YouTubers who aren't big trying to make it. Look at the ratio, but you don't want to do that. No, you only pick out the good examples. I don't want to hear it. Let's move on. Don't expect another Uncharted game after The Lost Legacy. Now, Naughty Dog has come out and said, they're done. They're done. And you know what? i got to applaud Naughty Dog for this. Because when they said they were done, you know, to make Lost Legacy, Lost Legacy, that's it. They're done. They're done with Uncharted because they wanted to wrap up the series. They don't want to keep going and going and going. However, it has been reported that there's a possibility that another company may take over Uncharted and keep it going. So it won't be Naughty Dog. Alright? So if you're a fan of Naughty Dog and everything they've done, I'm sure that you're going to say, you know, well, it's not the same company, I'm not going to deal with it. We've seen good examples of that at times. We've seen really bad examples of that at times. Hello, WB Games. Batman Origins. Okay, let's keep going. But let's move on. But then again, Batman Arkham Knight had problems with, with Roxy, so whatever. Um, in more news, alright, Outlast 2, that's right, I know some people are looking forward to Outlast 2, uh, the release date has been announced, and a series bundle is coming next month, so, link will be in the info bar if you are interested in that, okay, and I need to have a talk about, with you guys for a minute, guys and girls, about Daymare, that's right, I was supposed to talk about last week at that time, 1998, okay, now look, I've had a chance to play this game, you know, some of you were very, uh, generous in giving me a beta key, so I had a chance to play this game, I played in the challenge, um, very, remember, Daymare 1998 is Resident Evil 2. It's a remake. However, of course, with the problems with Capcom, they've had to change some things. Now, this game, I don't know why this game is not getting more, uh, it's getting more, uh, publicity. This game is good. This game is solid. I don't understand how we can go from, and I say this due to the fact that you have to understand, this Kickstarter, and I'll put the Kickstarter info bar so you can see the price for it, you know, how much they need to make by March 17th. This game is nowhere near goal. They're going to fail their goal. And these are developers who have put in a lot of work. This game is good. And it, I feel it's just it's sad to see um, such quality just 
get thrown away. Now, of course, we have to be very selective on the Kickstarters that we, we know we back. And we also know that uh, there's times where, you know, people just take the money and run because technically you're not backing an actual product, you're backing a theory. So we've seen, you know, guys or girls take the money, run, and say, fuck you guys. We've seen it. You know what I mean? People have gotten over their heads, and we're not even talking about Double Fine. But, yeah, so we've seen it. But also understand there are people out there who really care. And we've seen a number of Kickstarters as a late fallback. And, you know, you say, well, you know what? Maybe another company will take them on. Maybe they can get, you know, a loan. Or maybe we've seen it from time to time. It depends on the developer, I feel. Because we've seen the deceit. We just saw, like I said, Double Fine, we just saw. You know, they got all those gamers that gave you all that money. And then they went and got someone who could actually just give them a ton of money to back them. You know what I mean? But we talked about that before. You know what I mean? When it came to uh, Psychonauts 2. You know, and you say, well, they, they got you. They duped you. You know what I mean? But Daymare 1998 is a really good game for what I've played. You know what I mean? I played on the PC. Um, and I feel as though this is one of those games that deserves praise. It does. It's a really good horror game. Uh, like I said, Resident Evil, at first it was a Resident Evil 2 remake, but I, I, I don't want to spoil it because, like I said, I've played it. You know what I mean? I don't want to spoil it too much. But, uh, no, this game, this game is definitely something that you should look into. As far as I'm concerned, like I said, I, I believe that they're going. I believe that the beta is going public or something like that. I believe I didn't really do too much research on that, but I believe that's what I saw at once uh, is going public. So if you get a chance, you know what I mean, play it, play the challenge. It's really fun. It's really well done. As far as I'm concerned, and you're going to have your fixed camera angles and everything. Yeah, it happens. Yeah, it's, like I said, Resident Evil 2 S, very good game. Let's move on, and some bad news for Honor. That's right. Loses half of its player base on Steam in the first two weeks. Now, a lot of this can be because of server issues with Ubisoft, okay? Lots of server issues. It's not even much of the game problems, you know, and, and fixes like that, but it's clearly server issues. Servers have been down. There's times where you can't do anything. The Division had the same problem at one point, because Ubisoft servers are shit. They're shit. So for Honor, you know, they, they made a big deal about For Honor, how great it was going to be. At one point, they were talking about bringing it into the FGC, um, and now you're having these server issues, and half your player base has walked off Steam already. Already. Two weeks in. And here's what bothers me the most. Because the writer who was looking at uh, the numbers, they said by in two months, the player base will be gone. So they're just looking at, you know, they're trying to predict, given the numbers, you know, what's going to happen. You don't know what's going to happen by those numbers, because for all you know, Ubisoft can fix the servers, and then everyone comes back. You don't know. But to lose half your, fa uh, your, your player base in two weeks is a problem. And Ubisoft, like I said, Ubisoft, they're just like, yeah, we had the same problem with Division. Not a problem. Like, really? It's not a problem? Is it not a problem because you already have their money? Is that it? And now players are just stuck just with whatever? Is that it? Once again, you notice, this is the PC version. Again, PC version having problems. PC players keep getting shafted every fucking time. Jesus Christ. So, yeah, they need, they, there's, this, this game needs a lot of work. And the fact that it's lost so much, that's sad. Because the game is pretty fun. It's pretty fun. I don't know how much longevity, I mean, we had a debate about that not too long ago, about the longevity of this game, but the fact that you're, you're messing up on your servers and handy, pretty much handicapping even less. I mean, like, the longevity, it's not there now. So, we shall see what happens. Also, in the Division news, I said I'd get to it, the Division microtransaction uh, shop is now live. And when I heard this news, the first thing I said on Twitter when, y when you guys and girls sent it to me, I was like, wait a minute, people still playing Division? After all the things we saw, all the problems we saw with the division, people are still playing it. And other people were like, I thought it always had microtransactions. <laughs> like, people just, like, everyone's, like, really confused right now with the division. But, once again, Ubisoft only worried about money. Only worried about money. Microtransactions live. Got problems with servers? Doesn't matter. Microtransactions live, and people will buy them because, once again, they are full. Let's move on. As CTR supplies vanish, the classic arcade machine is virtually dead. Which is true, alright? It depends on you know, the screen, and the, you know, the type of monitors that they make for the classic arcade machines. Yeah, they're dead, so you have to preserve them as much as possible. However, as we know, these days with arcades, what they do is they have a lot of emulators that they run, you know, on, on real good, you know, monitors. So as far as I'm concerned, I feel bad for classic arcade games, but they can always be emulated. Even though you're not going to get the classic feel, you know, that we dealt with as gamers back in the day, the new generation will still be able to play these games. So as far as I'm concerned, I think, if, I mean, yeah, it's a hit, but at least the games are still around. And I think that's the most important part of this situation, you know? 
Also, in great news, and I can't wait for this to happen, Fire Pro Wrestling is making a comeback. That's what we're Fire Pro Wrestling World. It comes in 2017, I believe it comes in the summer. Um, Suda51 will be uh, behind this. I have to say this is going to be great. I'm excited for this, but you're not going to see me dancing on screen for it. But let's get something straight here, okay? Given all the stuff that they're going to give us, alright? Uh, full customization. Playing online. Being able to have pro tournaments with this game. I'm hoping that esports really picks up Fire Pro Wrestling. Could you imagine the commentary just for this? It, for everyone? For every FGC person that says, Oh, well, I'm just having my wrestling persona. Now you got it. Now it's here. The thing is, will you embrace it? Because this is it. Right now, you can really start cutting commentary and doing heel commentary and, with, you know, with face commentary and then tweeter commentary. Now you got what you want. The fact is, this can work. Fire Pro Wrestling, even though, let's be honest here, their community has been thriving for another game. And th that's the thing. I think the community is going to be taken for granted. Because we've been waiting a long time for a very long time for this. So, as far as I'm concerned... Fire Pro Wrestling, the way to go. They're going to have regular simulation and realistic simulation. Also, as an option, this game is going to give you what you want when it comes to wrestling fans. You don't have to worry about 2K constantly fucking you. We saw the glitches with that. This game is where it's at as far as I'm concerned. If we're not going to get another No Mercy or whatever for like the 64, how we did, then this is the game that you want to get. Fire Pro Wrestling has been around for years. It deserves this, re uh, this, I shouldn't say this remake, this sequel. And you know what? I hope it does very well. This is a first day buy, at least for me, because I'm excited for this. Notice, that's how I get excited. I don't need to go on camera and do a whole piece of shit. No, I don't need to do that. Because that's attention whoring. There's a difference. Last bit of news. Destiny 2. Yes, Destiny 2. It's coming fall of 2017. Now, I remind you, all right? Just want to remind people, all right? Because they already said there's things that won't be able to be transferred over in Destiny 2. But understand that they've said before that they're taking Destiny to Destiny Part 10, just like Assassin's Creed. So understand that this is just... This is nothing. This is just a bridge to another game. They're just going to keep giving you stuff once again to consume you to keep buying Destiny. That's all this is. There's a DLC getting ready to come out. Or it came out something, the last part of DLC, to the to ship off Destiny 1 and say, you know, it's good farewell. I believe there's DLC coming out. So, um, yeah. Um, once again, I wasn't sold on Destiny 1, not sold on Destiny 2. Like I said, they're going to keep doing this to you. Look at the blueprint. This is what they do. Anyways, I am done. They like said, if you're a fan of Destiny, of course you're going to buy it. You know, you're going to, but whatever. But, they like said, I'm done. I hope that a lot of you have learned a lot in this video and that you have to look at reality and see that this is bigger than just one person, than one prominent voice. This has been going on for years and it's going to keep going on until the community decides, okay, it's time to grow up. If you keep having guys get on camera and threaten reviewers over, over scores, that's not going to help you. If you keep seeing guys at tournaments and they're trying to get you to jump and flinch because you beat them in a the game, fuck, 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 no, that's not going to help you. If you see guys who just want to start spouting off racist bullshit during said tournament, that's not going to help you. Then, of course, you're going to have the random people who want to troll and say, you know, well, I don't like feminism or blah, 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 blah. Mind you, a lot of people who are in this now, they're not even part of Gamergate. They weren't even thinking about Gamergate if it wasn't for anti-feminism, blah, 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 blah. Let's not forget that. Okay? If you give them ammo, they're going to take it every time. And of course, you cannot control everybody. But look, when you have a simple aspect of divide and conquer when it comes to just consoles or games, if this is what we're fighting over, then guess what? You're not going to beat the media. You're not going to. And that's the problem. It's time to focus. Priorities are fucked. And if you're not worried about those priorities, and you say, you know what, I don't even care anymore. I don't know what to tell you. There's times where I get to a point where I'm like, you know what, fuck the community. But I always come back, you know, so I always come back, and I've always, for years, I have been for this community. Always. Like I said. But if I think about myself, then I can get bigger. I can get larger. I can get that fame. I can get random people that I don't know, random screens, defend me till the end. And get an internet army. Do you see the problem here? It has never been about this. Our community has never about, been about getting armies together and dogpiling people and, and fighting over bullshit. 
Well, I like Call of Duty. Well, I don't. Therefore, you're an asshole. What? what? Like, that... That makes no sense. Well, I like Xbox. Well, I like PlayStation. Well, th therefore, you're an asshole. Our community was never about this. Never. Like I said, and these aren't from kids either. These are from grown men acting this way. But you're entertained. And that's all that matters, right? It doesn't matter how it impacts our community. It doesn't matter the degeneracy that you see within adults. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like I said, just keep calling me the bad guy. Keep calling me the hater. Do whatever you want. All right? But guess what? Just like the media, no matter what you call me, it's not going to stop me from doing this. So you can understand that. And if you don't like that, then you can fuck off. That's how I feel. All right? At the end of the day, like I said, I understand a lot of you want to be positive and you want this to go away. I understand that. I mean, granted, we all want it to go away. I guarantee you that some people don't want it to go away so they can have drama to talk about. I guarantee you. But you have to understand that we, as a community, need to get better at this in order to have a fighting chance. That's what it is. It's not just, oh, well, we're used to this and we're too used to getting slandered. It's not that big of a deal. No! When is enough enough? When do you say, you know what? I'm tired of being talked about. Fuck you. You know what I mean? Like, where, where, when do you get tired of that? And then you take the fight to them. And of course, there's a lot of people, like I said, that will make excuses. We see a lot of people from Kotaku, writers from Kotaku, make excuses on why they act a certain way. Like I said, grown men. Grown women, you know, grown men and women. It's pathetic, man. Like I said, once again, I will say this as an ending part. Understand and you have to look and see who is really for you and who's just using you. That's all I have to say. I'll talk to y'all then. Y'all be safe, man. Till next week. I'm out.